Thank you for purchasing the UM260 Micro Monitor from System Studies Incorporated. Whether you are installing your monitor in a new office or replacing a dialaducer or NMA monitored office, the installation process is the same. For your small office installation, you will need a UM260 Micro Monitor, a flow measurement assembly, and a cross connect block or termination adapter. The modem version of the UM260 includes the following components. The UM260 chassis equipped with controller processor board, the RJ11 to RJ11 telephone line cable, and wall mounting kit. The LAN version of the UM260 will not include the RJ11 telephone cable and instead will include a DB9 male to female serial cable for PC or laptop to micromonitor connection. The installation is roughly the same for the modem and LAN versions of the UM260 micro monitor. For this demonstration, we will be using the modem version of the UM260 micro monitor. The UM260 provides continual monitoring for up to four binary devices and 16 transducer devices in your cable pressurization system. It also enables you to use one contact control relay device. To accommodate device pairs from the field, the monitor is equipped with a single 25-pair female amphenol connector. As an alternative to terminating devices at a standard connector block, System Studies offers two termination adapters to allow direct plug-in connectivity. Our 21-pair adapter accommodates the full monitoring capacity of the UM260 micro monitor. Our 6-pair adapter is designed for a maximum of three transducer devices and three binary devices. It is ideal for very small offices where a dial reducer is being replaced. For this demonstration, we will be using our six-pair termination adapter. Our flow measurement assembly comes with a high-resolution dual transducer that is pneumatically connected to a flow finder, both of which are mounted to a rugged stainless steel bracket. The flow measurement assembly can be equipped with any of our flow finder ranges. Selecting the right flow finder range for your flow measurement assembly is important to maintaining an effective air pressure system. For more information on choosing the correct flow finder range for your flow finder assembly, view our video selecting the correct flow finder range. A pressure regulator may or may not be needed in your particular situation. Most small offices with piston type compressors will require a regulator to be mounted to the flow measurement assembly in line between the office dryer and the flow finder. For more information on whether your office requires a regulator, please view our video titled Products and Applications for the Small Office. In this installation, we are dry fitting components together. Please use thread seal tape at all threaded connections. The regulator is marked on the bottom to designate the input and output sides. We will be using only one output from the regulator. Use an Allen wrench and the included plug to seal the second outflow. Mounting a regulator to the flow measurement assembly involves removing the 3 8 inch tubing fitting on the input side of the flow finder. Thread a 1 quarter inch male to male nipple into the flow finder. Next, thread the regulator onto the 1 quarter inch male fitting. Finally, thread the 3 8 inch tubing fitting onto the input side of the regulator. First determine where you will be mounting the flow measurement assembly. Use a 1 half inch air pipe cutter to sever the existing 3 8 inch tubing in the area of the flow measurement installation. Using appropriate screws, mount the flow measurement assembly to the wall. Remove the compression nut and ferrule from the body of the pre-installed 3 8 inch tubing fitting. Insert the 3 8 inch tubing into the nut and ferrule, then press the tubing onto the fitting body. Tighten the compression nut onto the fitting body. Repeat on the other side of the flow measurement assembly. The plumbing of the flow measurement assembly is now complete. Be sure to check for leaks. There are many different ways to mount the UM260 in a central office. We will be using the included wall mounting brackets and wood screws to mount the UM260 vertically on the wall of the central office. 
Using the included machine screws, attach the two mounting brackets to both ends of the UM260. Then using the included wood screws, mount the UM260 onto the wall of the central office. The central office installation work order specifies which fuse panel to use for supplying CO battery to the UM260. Be sure to use only central office talk battery. This type of DC power filters any spikes that may occur when AC power is used to charge the office batteries. Locate the black power connection block on top of the monitor. Identify the conductor that provides the negative 48 volt power supply from the CO battery. Insert this lead into the center terminal jaw marked with negative 48 volts DC on the chassis of the UM260. Tighten the appropriate adjustment screw to ensure proper connection. Insert the 48 volt return conductor in the terminal jaw to the left of the power lead in the location marked RTN for return on the chassis of the UM260. Insert a conductor from a good frame ground into the right terminal jaw, which is marked FGND for frame ground. The UM260 is equipped with a 12 inch by one quarter inch frame ground strap that is secured to the chassis on one end using a number 10 terminal and lock washers. In a wall mount situation, you may need to modify the number 10 terminal with a longer conductor to reach the central office earth ground. With the power connector block securely inserted into the monitor, flip the power supply switch located on top of the UM260 to the on position. In a few seconds, the UM260's power supply LED will light, indicating that the unit is properly powered. Be sure to turn off the UM260 before inserting the termination adapter or wiring the transducer pairs. Connect the RJ11 telephone line. If you are using the LAN version of the UM260, the monitor is equipped with an RJ45 LAN connection. Simply insert an Ethernet cable. Begin by attaching the termination adapter to the 25 pair Amphenol connector on top of the UM260. We will be using a 6 pair termination adapter to terminate the conductor pairs from the flow measurement assembly. Cut the 3 8 inch tubing and conductor pairs from the monitoring assembly's transducer to length. Note that the free end of the tubing will have the conductor pairs labeled. The blue-white pair is for flow. The orange-white pair is for pressure. Some transducers will have a green-white pair labeled spare. This spare pair is not used. Locate the transducer pair termination points on the termination adapter. On this small office termination adapter, there will be just three transducer pair locations. Beginning with the transducer pair terminals marked 2-1, insert the blue-white conductor pairs from the flow sensor device and tighten the termination screws. The termination adapter labels each termination point as T for tip or R for ring. However, the flow measurement assembly is not polarity sensitive. Repeat this wiring process for the pressure sensor device, the orange-white pair, by inserting the conductor pairs into the terminals marked 2-2. This six-pair termination adapter also has room for terminating three binary contact pairs. Using the tip and ring terminals for binary contact pair 1-1, terminate the contact alarm pair from the dryer. At this point, the physical process of installing the UM260 has been completed. Use the instructions included in the manual to program your UM260 micromonitor. Take detailed notes of the type of devices you have added to each device number terminal on the termination adapter. You will need to notify the person responsible for data entry that the unit is in place and ready for testing. If you have followed the wiring procedure used in this video, your data entry sheet will look like this. If installed in an NMA monitored office or an unmonitored office, new data will need to be created. If installed to replace a dial inducer, a simple data change is all that is necessary. Follow your instructions. System Studies Incorporated technical support may be able to perform the data changes for you depending on your telco's technical support agreement. Please contact System Studies Tech Support at 831-477-8945.